Hi there, this is Harry, and welcome to Advanced English Classes with Harry. Before we get started, just to let you know that if you enjoy my YouTube channels, why don't you subscribe to them? Because if you do, it really, really helps and I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Later on, I'll give you my address and contact details if you want to contact me, if you want to arrange individual lessons for you, family, friends, or whoever it might be. So what are we going to talk to you about today? Well, in the advanced class today, we're going to look at advanced collocations for negative emotions and feelings, negative emotions and feelings. And like always, I think I've got 10 of these and I'll give them to you in a list and then I'll go through them one by one and give you a few examples. Here they are. To feel down, to feel sick with worry or to say I'm worried sick. You can use either way that it's both the same. So to feel sick with worry or I'm worried sick. To give vent to something, v to give vent to something, to weigh on your conscience or to weigh on your mind, a heavy heart, nasty shock, dread to think, bear a grudge or to bear a grudge, to dash somebody's hopes, and then finally, to bottle up your feelings. Okay, so all of those quite negative in there, the way they express feelings. So let's go through them and give you some examples. To feel down. Well, we can all feel down from time to time. And literally when we feel down, or, mm, our lips drop at the edge, our chin drops, our eyes droop. So we feel down. We feel that we're lacking energy. We feel depressed. We feel upset all of those negative emotions. Yeah? What are you feeling down about? Might be a way somebody might ask you. Ah, just feeling a little down today. I don't feel myself. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the weather or maybe it's just the, the time of the year, whatever it might be. I just feel a little down. I think I'll go home, put my feet up and have a glass of wine. Yeah, So to feel down. To feel sick with worry or to be worried sick. Well, usually when somebody is worried sick, they've got a lot of uh, stress, a lot of problems on the mind because perhaps a family member is sick. So they are worried sick is what's, what's going to happen. They've gone into hospital for a couple of weeks and they're not sure what the results of the tests are going to be. Or, oh, my daughter, she's worried sick about the exams that are just around the corner. They're going to happen in a few weeks. And if she doesn't get the points she wants, God, I don't know what we're going to do. So she's worried sick and I'm sick with worry. So we're all under a little bit of strain and all feeling the stress. Oh, I'm worried sick about the dog. You know, he's never, ever sick. And I had to take him to the vet and the vet said he wasn't sure what it was. And we'll check it out in a, in a week or two. But he's no better. He's just lying around the house. I hope, I hope it's not bad news. OK, so to be worried sick or sick with worry, something on your mind. To give vent to something. Well, usually when we give vent to something, it's to give vent to our anger or to give vent to some frustration or something that irritates us too. So to give vent to our anger, irritation or frustration would be good examples. When we give vent to something means we let, let it out. Okay, so perhaps you go and you kick a bottle on the street or you go out and you kick the lawnmower or you kick your bicycle to, to vent your anger or vent your frustration. You might be cycling along, enjoying the warm summer sun, and you get a puncture in your bicycle and you hear that terrible sound as the air goes out of your tire. And you realize that you don't have a pump with you. You don't have a puncture repair kit. You have nothing. So you pick the bike up and you throw it in the ground to vent your anger. And then just by chance, somebody happens to come along who's got a spare tire or a spare inner tube and voila, they fix your bicycle for you. OK, so to vent your anger, to vent your frustration. You're trying to work out that mathematical problem. And for some reason, you just can't get the last little bit of that equation. And you almost pull your hair out with frustration. You vent your frustration. 
and your mother comes running up the stairs. Well, what's wrong? What's wrong? What are you screaming about? Ah, this mathematics. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So to vent your frustration, to vent your irritation means to show it, to reflect it in some way by screaming, kicking, shouting, or whatever it might be. Okay. Whatever you do, don't kick the cat, don't kick the dog. Something weighs on your conscience or something weighs on your mind. So you might go to the doctor if it's really bad and the doctor says, what's up with you today? Well, I'm not feeling good. I've had bad news at work. Yeah, there's problems at home. I have just all of these problems weighing on my mind. And the doctor tries to talk to you and tell you, well, look, these things happen from time to time. You know, try to get out, try to get some exercise, try to get away from the problems. And if it doesn't work, well, look, come back to me. We can all, always prescribe something, but I don't want to prescribe something unless it's really, really necessary. So try something a little bit more natural. So when you've got uh, something weighing on your mind or something weighing on your conscience, you feel guilty. Yeah, maybe you feel guilty about something you should have done. Perhaps you didn't do the report as well as you could have done for the boss. Perhaps there's something a colleague or a friend really asked you for and you said no. But when you got home, you were thinking about it. Oh, perhaps I should have lent her the money. You know, she really looked desperate. But you made a promise to yourself once that you would never lend friends money. So you you decided not to do it. But now you're feeling a little bit guilty and it's weighing on your conscience, weighing on your mind. So that's something pressing down on you, like a weight, yeah, to weigh, W-E-I-G-H, to weigh on your mind. A heavy heart, well, a heavy heart will also weigh on your mind. When we have a heavy heart, it means we're sad about something. We often use the expression to do something with a heavy heart it means you do it, but your heart's not in it. You don't really want to do it, okay? So perhaps you have told your kids that we're not going to have a holiday this year because really we can't afford it and they're really upset because they were looking forward to the boat trip they were looking forward to the drive they were looking forward to doing the camping trip but for some reason we don't have the money and you can't go so it's with a heavy heart that you call the kids together and say guys look I have to tell you that we have to cancel the holiday this year. We just can't go. And of course, there's a wailing and gnashing of teeth and screaming that, oh, you've ruined the summer. Blah. Yeah, everybody's a little bit upset. So you do it with a heavy heart. You do it without wanting to do it. It's just one of those things. Perhaps you're a school teacher and you have to mark the exams and you look at a few and you've got a couple of bright uh, students, but for some reason they just didn't reflect it in the exams or the tests, and it's with a heavy heart that you fail them. But you have to tell them they really need to try better the next time. So it's with a heavy heart that you give them the exam results because when you look at their faces, they're going to be really, really disappointed. So to do something with a heavy heart. A nasty shock. Well, a nasty shock can be literally if you stick your finger in the socket on the wall, you'll get a nasty shock. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But a nasty shock is something that's bad news. Oh, I got a nasty shock when I opened the bill. The electricity has gone up by 60%. 60%. Can you believe it? Wow. I don't know what I'm going to tell Bill when he comes home. Yeah. So it's a real, real shock, a nasty shock. We got a nasty shock when I opened the letter and found out that I'd been caught speeding a few weeks ago. Oh, it was that Sunday morning, I was nice and relaxed, just driving along on the motorway, you know, the music on, no traffic in front of me. I didn't even see the speed camera and I don't even think I saw the, the police car. And of course, I opened the letter this morning. Yeah, got a fine of 70 euro. Could you believe it? 70 euro. That's another nasty shock. Or when you get the vet's bill, you've taken the dog to the vet for the second or third time in the last couple of months. And when the bill comes in, you go, oh, my God, these vets, they can really, really charge a lot of money. So another nasty shock. OK, so nasty shock, bad news, something you weren't expecting, something you didn't want to happen. And yeah, when you open that envelope or you open that email, there it is staring you in the face, a very expensive invoice. Dread to think about something, yeah? Now, and we use this expression quite a lot. Oh, I dread to think what the world's going to be like next year when we have all these food shortages. What are the, what's going to be the prices of everything? We'll be able to get flour. Will we be able to get 
ordinary things like pasta, even toilet rolls, okay? Remember during the pandemic, yeah, you couldn't get toilet rolls in the first couple of weeks for love, no money, yeah? So I dread to think, meaning I don't want to think about it. I dread to think what life would be like without mobile phones. How would we contact everybody? How would we send messages? We'd have to go back to the old way of ringing up on those landlines or or even walking around. Oh my God, think of that. We'd have to get on a bus and go and see somebody. So I dread to think what life would be like without technology. I dread to think what life would be like or what my life would be like without a mobile phone. Okay, and me as a teacher, I would dread to think what life would be like without online lessons. I'd have to get in my car and I'd have to waste hour after hour going to and back from classes. So to dread to think, or I dread to think what might happen, a negative view, a negative feeling. To bear a grudge. Well, we all have borne a grudge from time to time. So if you bear a grudge, it's a bad feeling or an ill feeling you hold against somebody because of something they said or something they did or something they didn't do a long time ago. It could be days, weeks, months, years. Somebody or some people bear grudges for a long, long time. There can be family grudges, of course. There's families always have rows and some brother bears a grudge against another one and it passes on through the generations. And somebody might ask, what's all that about? Why don't they talk to each other anymore? Or he bears a grudge because he went out with his girlfriend and they eventually got married. So it could be something to do with love. Often is to bear a grudge. Often the reason has been long forgotten about, but the grudge is still there. And if you ask the people to explain what what is all this about, nobody could explain it to you. So to bear a grudge is when you hold something against somebody, something they did do, something they did say, or something they didn't do. And to bear a grudge for a long, long time. Businesses in competition with each other. The the managing partners or the CEOs might bear a grudge against the other because they've got a better position in the marketplace. It could be for many, many simple reasons to bear a grudge. To dash somebody's hopes. Dash is a wonderful word. To, you can Dash means to rush somewhere or dash means to break something, to dash the glass against the wall, to the ship dashed against the rocks and broke into many, many pieces. So when we dash someone's hopes, we break them, we smash them, yeah, we destroy them. Yeah? So if you get bad results in your exams, it dashes your hopes of getting into that university that you wanted to go to and you'll have to settle for the other university. Your team lost in the semi-finals of the cup, so it dashed your hopes of being able to go and watch them in the big stadium or it, they dashed the hopes of bringing glory to the team for yet another season, okay? So to dash your hopes. When you were walking down the street, you saw, you saw the boy who you fancied walking out with another girl, and that dashed your hopes about ever getting together with him, okay? So when you dash someone's hopes, it means they are over, they have ended, and they'll have to start again to dash your hopes. To bottle up your feelings. When we bottle something up, right, we put it in a bottle and we stick a cork in the top of the bottle, so you literally bottle it up. When we bottle up our feelings, it means we don't let them out or we try not to let them out. And like every bottle with a cork in it, eventually it will pop, yeah? Okay, so you have to be really, really careful and you have to be very careful. You don't shake it because it will explode. But if you bottle up your feelings, you don't let people know how you feel and you sit there steam coming out your ears mm, when you really should be telling somebody exactly how you feel. So we often hear the expression, don't bottle it up. Don't bottle up your feelings. You'll feel worse. It'll make you feel sick. So let it out. Go outside and scream. Go out and have a run or a cycle. Do something that will let those feelings out. Don't bottle it up. Don't lock it inside you. Don't keep it with a cork on it because, yeah, it might explode and hopefully not in your face. Okay, so those are the 10 particular collocations, all about uh, emotions and feelings, all with a negative twist. So let me go down through them one more time. To feel down, to feel sick with worry or to be worried sick, 
to give vent to something, to give vent to some feelings of anger or frustration, to weigh on your conscience or to weigh on your mind, to feel guilty. A heavy heart, to do something with a heavy heart when you don't really want to do it, but you have to do it. To get a nasty shock when you open that envelope and the bill falls out for an extraordinary amount of money. You dread to think about something. I dread to think what would happen if. To bear a grudge, to hold a grudge against somebody for a long period of time, to bear a grudge. To dash somebody's hopes so that they can't do what they wanted to do, what they hoped to do, to go to that university because they didn't get the right exam results. And then to bottle up your feelings is the last one where we lock everything in tightly, we don't let it out, and sometime, someplace, it's going to explode. It's going to cause a problem. Okay, so to bottle up your feelings. Okay, so 10 particular collocations, negative emotions and feelings. They're at a really advanced level. So as always, try to use them, try to practice them. You won't remember them all, but try to practice one or two. Okay, I promise to give you my address. So if you want to contact me, you can do so on www.englishlessonviaskype.com. If you or a family member or somebody you know would like to have one-to-one -one lessons, I've got lots of teachers waiting and standing by, ready to help you for uh, preparation for those important job interviews or something else where you just want to improve your business English or your conversational English. Okay, as always, I appreciate you watching, listening. Remember to subscribe to the channel and as always, join me again soon.